today on Divorce Court. I'm here today because I would really like for Judge Lynn to look at me and Shannon's situation. Shannon and I have a lot going on with our finances and our blended family. And I just don't know if love is enough. My biggest pet peeve with Shaman is her attitude and the way she deals with problems. And when she has those attitudes, how she deals with me and the kids. If Shannon doesn't change his financial situation within our family, I'm not gonna be able to go through with this. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Shama Talbert and Shannon Spicer. The two of you are uh, engaged to be married. Uh, you had to get here quick, fast, and in a hurry because uh, this marriage license expires in 45 days and you're not quite sure whether you should use the other side of it. So I want to help you out with whatever issues that you have. I'm going to start with you, Ms. Talbert. I understand, just so we can get the basics together, you two have, between the two of you, 11 children. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Tell me who has what. I have six boys. He has four girls and one boy. Six boys, and you have four girls... And one boy. And yes, one boy. Do you have any concerns about the number of the few children that you have and your ability to support them? Is it, it, does that at all play in...? Absolutely not. I come from a big family. I'm mm -hmm. one of 11, so mm -hmm. the number does not frighten me at all. Mm -hmm. um, financially, there are some reservations about that. Okay. Why don't you tell me what your primary concerns are about the, the possibility of marrying Mr. Spicer? Our future, I'm just worried and concerned. Like, with me, I go to a building. I go to work every single day. There is a set amount of money that is for me at the end of that two-week pay period. With Shannon, in the beginning, he was working. He um, ended up having to leave that job, and we started a company together. But ever since then, it's just so... It's, it's not enough. It's is just it, not enough. Is it haphazard, or is it just not enough on a consistent basis? He's applying himself. It's just not enough on a consistent basis. And I've tried to maybe try to squeeze in, maybe you should do something a little different. But that's not where his heart is. Mr. Spicer, what do you say about your economic uh, fortunes and possibilities? Yeah, it's been, um, you know, it, it's been slow. It's, it slows down and it speeds up. Um, and what do it, you do? Do you... Uh, I drive 18-wheelers. Uh-huh. And, um, like, the docks have slowed down a, a bit, and, you know, it was... That's, that's the main problem, just mm -hmm. work slowing down. If you know that you got a guy who has seasonal or fluctuating income, is that a deal-breaker for you? Because he can't control that. No, not necessarily. In the beginning, I didn't know that it was going to be off and on, because in the beginning, he was working with the company. But when we decided to step out on our own and start our own company, we had to get small contracts and deals sure. through other companies, and that's fine, but we need to figure out another way to get those monies in between time. Okay. You want him to get a second job? We can both get second jobs, but mm -hmm. I don't want to be the only one to work in seven days a week. Are you, uh... You open to getting a second job? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to getting a second job, and, uh... The, the main thing is, when we started the company, we were still, like... We were still the middlemen, basically. So this is where the problem is coming in, because I'm getting work through somebody else. Right. And right. but right. when when the work is good, the money is good. extremely it's very, good. Very, very good. Yes. It'd be very, very good. And then it's it's just a few things that we have to work out so we can get it more consistent. And that's mm -hmm. what I'm in the process of working out right now. What is your primary concern about marrying Ms. Tolbert? My primary concern is her attitude and the way she deals with conflict and deals with people in general, me, the kids, family members. Tell me about her attitude and her method in dealing with conflict. I tell her all the time, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. She, she can't... If, if she's had a bad day or she has an attitude, oh, man, everybody's gonna get it. She's, she's gonna have an attitude with everybody. She's gonna have smart remarks. She's always gonna have something to say. She's she not... loud and angry a lot. No, no, not, not loud not... and angry. She just she's gonna she's gonna show you, make sure you know she has an attitude and she's upset about something. Ms. Talbert, now, now, <laughs> relax a little bit. Take it in. Looking back, looking at how you do deal with the she kids knows. and him and the public, is there a sense of attitude and anger and edginess about you that may be a bit over the top? Yes, and I believe it's totally my fault, for real, because I believe in people. 
and I see so much potential. So if I see that you're dropping the ball and you're not delivering how I would deliver for you or how I feel you should deliver for our family, I'm going to snarl. Do you think that he's not trying? You understand when you start a business, it's always hard in the beginning to get clients. And then once you... What's better than working for somebody else is that once the business gets started, you get more of the profit and the money. Are you not willing to back him up on that? As far as the, the business goes, yes, I'm going to back him up 100%. But when it comes to other small things within the family, I feel like you should back me up, too. Such as? Such as it's six kids in the house. If you see that I just got off work, I got homework because I'm in school also, and dinner needs to be made, somebody probably needs to put their clothes in the washing machine, don't lay across the bed. Help me. Mr. Spicer, does she have a legitimate concern in that area? Yeah, some... She, she does. I, she, she wants me to know what she wants done, when she wants it done. And I keep telling her, all you got to do is tell me and I'll fix it. Any problem that she's ever had or any issue she's ever had, I fix it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, <laughs> I don't even need to discuss it. If you got an issue, you tell me what that issue is, I'm going to fix it unless I have a problem with that issue. Then we'll talk about yeah, it. Mr. Spicer, I think you missed the point. And I think a lot of guys missed the point on that. It's like every day, it's the same thing. It's the clothes, it's the this, this, and that. And... Why do I have to tell you every day that you need to... That's all I'm yeah. saying. You know, you, know, you know what I mean? If you're laying there and I'm coming in doing all this, ain't nothing new about and it. it's not no. all if the you, time you, I hey, cook. you know, come in, you know, like, do the cooking. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have to tell you. Because it's nothing new. And then, again, this was an issue that all she had to do was bring up, and then it was, it's fixed. I don't want... <laughs> I'm not about... <laughs> You he see knew where what I, I, I just you, said. you was still, in my house for five she seconds. She shouldn't have to tell you <laughs> if these things go on every, every day. She should day. be able to rely on you to, as a grown man to see what's going on in the house, see what kind of help she needs, and provide that every day. If you keep making her tell you, it's gonna make but her she cranky. She doesn't have to keep telling me. That. She uh, it takes one time and I fix it. I'm just like if I got an issue, I don't expect her just to know the issue. I. I I think I got to tell it's her what the issue, issue is. It's not an issue. It's stuff that needs to get done in the house every day. And she's overwhelmed every day. And you need to take a couple of things off her plate. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that, is that what you're exactly. trying to say? Exactly. We're at a restaurant. And I needed to use his phone because mine was dead. And I look at the phone. A text message comes in. And it says, shaking my head, damn babe. And I look at him. And I'm like, well, we've been, like, going at this for about eight months now. Like, where did the bay come from? Because it didn't come from me. Your version of that event, Mr. Spicer. One of the reasons you've decided that you're contemplating marrying him, even though you don't feel he supports you as he should or he's not as quite as solid as he needs to be, because I, I think you're trying your best. I, I, I'm not going to, going to take that from you. It's because you have six boys in your home and you don't want them to see you shacking up with a dude and you don't want them to see a dude laying in your house while you're working and you supporting them. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Explain to me why that is so important to you. It is important to me because I believe in Shannon just like I believe in my children. I mean, it is already hard out here to be a black man. Me being a black woman, loving a black man, giving birth to a black man, it's hard. And I don't want them to feel like they can easily just get with a woman who they think is strong and just have things taken care of for them. I want them to be men, and I need them to see a man so that they know what they're going after for their future. She doesn't take care of me. But I've always had done my own thing. She acts like I don't do... Mr. Spicer, say that again. I'm sorry. She acts like I don't do anything. Like, this mm -hmm. is... This is far and in between. This is not something that goes on It's not all a the constant time. problem no. that you're not contributing to the household no, when, in fact, you no, can't. No, I've, I've cooked. I've done, I've done all that. I've done it, or yeah. I do it. There's a difference. Yeah, but I've done it on occasion. Like... I do it on a, on a regular so that she has something off her plate on a regular. That's what I'm talking about, OK? And I, and I tried it. I asked her, you, you need me to do anything. You need something. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. You know, you know but anyway, yeah. who is suspected on cheating on whom? Well, in the beginning, um, 
there was a little sketchy whatever. We worked it out. Uh, we, he, was, he was always at my house. And that's one of the things I told him, like, okay, we need to get a house together so that we can show these kids how to do it right. He agreed. We went and got our own home. Well, a few months down the line, we're at a restaurant, and I needed to use his phone because mine was dead. And I look at the phone, a text message comes in, and it says, shaking my head, damn bae. And I look at him, and I'm like, well, we've been, like, going at this for about eight months now. Like, where did the bae come from? Because it didn't come from me. So he takes the phone and he gets all frustrated. So I leave the restaurant. I go sit in the car and I'm like, I know this man is not trying to play me. Like, this is the last thing that I need. I sit outside for about 30 minutes. When I come back into the restaurant, I could tell that he was bothered. Like, he looked like he may have even cried. So I sat there and I tried to be calm. I'm like, tell me what it is. So he tells me that one of his family members gave his ex his phone number. They text him, he replied, and that was their reply back to him saying, I'm with somebody else, don't worry about it or whatever. Fast forward a few months later, the money's going a little messed up, household bills, evictions, disconnections, I can't take it. He thinks that I'm cheating, I think he thinks I'm cheating because of what I seen in his phone, so he got insecure. So in his response, he says, he stops paying the bills because he thinks that I'm cheating. I couldn't take it, I asked him to leave. I had the money, I can get evicted on my own. I'm not gonna get these evictions that and pay the bill the and you're yeah. still there. So I asked him to leave, so he left. Your version of that event, Mr. Spicer. That is not the case. I was, I was waiting on a check to come, and that check was to pay the bills. She was uh, with the attitude and everything and told me to leave before the check even came. She was the one that kept saying, oh, you're not gonna pay the bills. That never, I never said that. Well, let, let me, I wanna stop talking about money for a minute and ask this. Uh, have both of you been faithful to one another? Have you told her all the truths about the women? And have you told him all the truths about anything you may or may have not done when you were together? When I asked him to leave, we ended up getting back together like four months later. And I had somebody from my past that was contacting me and he needed to use my phone because he ran it over. He ran his over with his semi-truck. So he takes my phone. He's going through every little knick-knack app in my phone and he found some emails and pictures that I sent to somebody else. Right. And I told him when he emailed me the pictures, when you pick me up, I'll, let's, let's go to lunch and I'll sit down and I'll explain everything to him. So I did. I was like, I had inhibitions about us getting back together in the beginning because I wasn't After sure I that you paid were- the bills. Because I told you, I, I wasn't sure that you were so going to you you were you gonna be left there. Me where I was at then. Okay. You should have left. Period. All right, All right. I, 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 I get it. I get it. I, I got one more question for you that I think is very important. I had some female friends and they wanted to have a baby, and so we all kind of, you know. All I, three of you had a threesome. You were servicing them both, so and, one of them would get pregnant. Is that it? Do you think Shoma and Shannon know how to properly communicate with each other? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at DivorceCourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Now, Mr. Spicer, within the course of all of this, and I'm not quite sure when this happened, you got someone pregnant under some very unusual circumstances and then ended up and now currently are on child support. Could you explain how that happened to you? Um, this is way before we even... But he did not tell me about it. Okay, well, yes. well, well tell me! I had some female friends and they wanted to have a baby and so we all kind of, you know. All I, three of you <laughs> had a threesome. They were two lesbians who wanted to have a baby. You were servicing them both so and one of them would get pregnant. Is that it? I didn't expect any of this to happen and time had passed, years had passed and then this is when I found out even about the baby. Baby. And they, and they, and they put a support order on you. Yes, while I was incarcerated. Yes. That's how I even found out. No, th I didn't that, know. Yeah. Don't ha around having unprotected sex with people. I, I don't understand what, what was, the issue is. I was still, I, my mind wasn't right at this time. I was still 
out doing things, you know, and that that was just one of those mistakes in my life that, you know, They're I got to deal with stick with you forever. for 18 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you upset when you found out about that? Um, I was very shocked because it was kind of sort of in the beginning, but I was on the phone with one of his family members, and it's... The, fam the conversation is ending, and the family member's like, oh, yeah, and tell Shannon he needs to start spending more time with such and such. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, who is that? And then it comes out. That half-truth is a whole Did, lot, baby. Yeah, that, that, you know what? Sure let, 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 let me say this. Sure uh, if me. people are contemplating getting married, you've got to be wholly and completely honest with one another. You don't have to tell what candy you sto stole when you were 11. But if you got a baby out there with somebody in a support order, that's something that you need to talk about. Having said that, let me say this. You Again, two this really are trying to decide to get married. I want Mr. Spicer to tell, give me a 90-second sales job on why you believe that you, Ms. Ms. Tolbert is the woman for you and you should be the man for her. Go. I love you because of who you are. I love your, your spirit, your, the, way, the way you... Um deal with the kids when you're in a good mood. I like the, the, <laughs> the thoughts that you have, you know, and, and she's beautiful, you know, that's, and that's not even on the top of the list why I even deal with her, you know what I mean? I like the way she walks, talks, right, the things it. she does, you know? Mm -hmm. All I right, Ms. Tolbert, 30 seconds, go ahead. Shannon, I love you and I would love to marry you because I swear you complete me. You make me feel whole. I enjoy being around you. I like that the boys love being with you. I love that my mom loves you. That that says a lot. If I can have less dysfunction, that is it. I mean, you you know my past. You knew how I grew up. I, I just love you, and I just want you to love me how I need to be loved. Don't love me how you want me to love you, because it doesn't work that way. How can Shannon be a better role model for Shoma's boys? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Mr. Spicer, I want you to hear me. I think you're a good guy. I think you are a right guy. I think you want to be a great husband to her. But what I'm going to ask you is to make a deliberate effort to put in your past, past behaviors. People always read the script that was written for them when they were young. You didn't get a good script. You have to write a new one. That new script requires you to deliver to Ms. Talbert, not just economically, but emotionally with assistance. If you can't bring in the amount of money that you want to right now, come home and have the stuff clean and cooked and all that so we can take some of that burden off. Yes, I know you don't like her attitude, but so many people don't realize that people who are under pressure, underfunded, overwhelmed, in deep, their first thing to do is to get angry because they're so frustrated. You can, you can control that attitude by giving her more peace and controlling more, uh, taking things off her plate so she doesn't feel like she's holding up the entire world. I think you're the guy to do it, and I want you to be the guy that does it. Ms. Tolbert, I, I get you. I get you. I feel you. I think you love him. I think you have to be patient with his abilities to make money, but I think he's doing the best that he can. I think you're doing a great job raising those six boys, and I think he's worth the effort at the time. He ain't quite right yet, but just <laughs> polish him up a little, take this beautiful certificate, and marry one another. You both Thank have you. a wonderful day. The changes that I think we both can work on is, for one, I can be a little bit more easy with my attitude. I know it can be hard and sharp, and I apologize. Um, I, I think I'll help around the house a little bit more. Thank you. Give you a helping hand and help you out. Thank you.